Hello everyone, I Professor Bhavit Kumar M. Kataria welcomes you into the video series of operating system and we are discussing unit number 2 that is process management. Till today, we have discussed two techniques in terms of process scheduling. Those were first come first serve and shortest job first. So guys, if you are still remain to watch our earlier video regarding to shortest of first scheduling, so you can click on I button at top right corner and you can watch that video and come back here to understand the priority scheduling. So today's our session about the priority scheduling in process scheduling. In terms of priority scheduling, basically uh, there are two types of scheduling, non-preemptive and preemptive priority scheduling. It means our earlier techniques, uh, those are first come first serve and shortest job first. Both techniques uh, working in non-preemptive mode. But priority scheduling is working in non-preemptive as well as preemptive both type of mode. Next thing that is scheduling criteria. So non-preemptive priority scheduling following the priority as well as arrival time for the scheduling criteria. So let take one example. Whatever the data we have here, those data are in timing of milliseconds. So as per our earlier videos, again here we have to find the average turnaround time and average waiting time. And another thing that we have to care about the priority. So here data given us higher number has higher priority. So that is one additional parameter uh, which is given here. Actually this parameter was not available into the earlier techniques. So there is need to understand this new parameter priority and numbers are given in terms of priority. So there is need to think higher number has a higher priority or lower number has a higher priority. So this thing uh, is given into the data many times but if uh, there is uh, no manipulation or there is no clear cut instruction so you can go with your imagination you can take a higher number as a higher priority or lower number has a higher priority. If this thing is not mention during the data table. So let start drawing a grand chart for this data. So first as our earlier discussion we will always start our grand chart with the time 0. So at a arrival time 0 process P1 was arrived only. Get it? If you will look here data table, so at arrival time 0 only process P1 was arrived. Remaining all number of processes arrived after time 0. So actually uh, priority of process uh, P1 is only 2. But there is no need to think about the priority because at arrival time 0 only single process P1 is available. So there is no need to compare the priority of P1 with any other processes. So let start executing process P1 and we will look about the bus time. So here bus time is 4. So for the 4 millisecond we can execute process P1. Get it? Because it is a non-preemptive mode. So no need to think the uh, priority of other processes in between the time unit 0 to time unit 4 because it is non-preemptive mode. Whenever once process P1 started their execution, then no one can stop the process P1. So process P1 will work for the 4 millisecond and completion time of process P1 will become 4 millisecond. But if we will think about the 4 millisecond, so up to 4 millisecond, many processes were arrived and these processes are P2, P3, P4 and P5. So now at a time unit 4 millisecond, four another process are ready to execute. So now there is need to choose which process will execute first out of these four. So right now there is need to look about the priority. 
So if we will look about the P2, P3, P4 and P5, so P4 has a higher number that is mentioned into the data higher number has higher priority. So we will choose with the higher number. So P4 has a higher priority and next process P4 will execute. Again, we will also look for the burst time of process P1 that is 5 millisecond. Get it? So process P4 will execute up to next 5 millisecond and it will complete their execution at time unit 9. Get it? So 9 will become a completion time for process P5. Next, again, we have remaining few processes which were arrived up to the time unit 9 because P6 and P7 was arrived at time unit 5 and time unit 6. So now we have a total 5 number of remaining processes P2, P3, P5, P6 and P7. So again, we will look about the priority. So here P6 has a higher digits 12. So we will choose P6 for the next execution. And we will also look about the burst time. So 4 time unit, 4 millisecond is a burst time of process P6. So it will execute for the 4 time units and 9 plus 4, it will execute up to 13 time units and 13 millisecond will be the completion time for process P6. Now, all processes were actually arrived. So now we have to just compare the priority. No need to look about any new processes are arriving or not because we have a 7 processes and three processes completed their execution and remaining four process were already arrived. So just look around the priority, which one have a higher priority, you can choose that particular process. So if you will look about the remaining processes, P7 has a higher priority that is 9 and next execution will happen for the P7. P7 will start their execution about their burst time. Burst time is 6. So 13 plus 6 up to 19 time unit and 19 will become the completion time for process P7. Same for the remaining processes. P5 has a higher priority 8. So next process P5 will execute. Its burst time is 1 time unit. So 19 plus 1 20. P5 will complete their execution at a 20 millisecond. Now P2 and P3 remain. So out of P2 and P3, P3 has higher priorities. Number 6. So now P3 will start their execution. Burst time of P3 is 3 time units. So 20 plus 3, P3 will execute up to 20. 3 and 23 become completion time. Next, only last process remain that is P2. So now P2 will start their execution. P2's burst time is 2 time units. So 23 plus 2 is equal to 25 become a completion time for process P2. Now, just we have to calculate turnaround time and waiting time. So we already know how to calculate turnaround time and waiting time in our earlier session of first come first serve and shortest job first. So I am not going to repeat how to find out turnaround time and waiting time. Get it? Same thing we have already discussed how to find out the average turnaround time and how to find out average waiting time. So if you have any query regarding to the non preemptive priority scheduling. So you can write your questions or queries into the comment box and you can ask to me. Whatever the background images you are looking that is the picture of my farm. During my study or my graduation, I uh, actually uh, helped my parent uh, whenever I have a holidays or few times uh, from my study. So I, I am again requesting to you during your graduation and during your study if you have any time remain after your study, so always help your parent in their profession and you will able to learn few new things about their profession and it is a real life example. Let's start discussing new technique that is preemptive priority scheduling. So if we will look about the preemptive mode, so again criteria is priority and arrival time but thing is that mode is preemptive in our earlier case that was a non preemptive mode so we can't stop any process in between the execution but here we will uh, able to stop any process during their execution let's see with the example that is data given to us three processes priority is given and now after separating burst time uh, three things is given first cpu time then after few uh, time 
given for the input output devices and again few time given for the CPU. So here uh, bus time is uh, going to divide in three separate timings. So that is nothing new but uh, our bus time uh, which was given to us in earlier example. All data or timings are in millisecond. Again we are going to find average turnaround turn time and average waiting time. But one little bit uh, difference is here that is lower number has higher priority. In previous case we have discussed higher number has higher priority. So uh, right now for the uh, new experience here I am going to take lower number has a higher priority. So let's start drawing grand chart. We have just three processes and we are drawing uh, from arrival time zero. So if we will look about the arrival time zero, so process P1 is uh, arrived, get it? But right now here I am going to separate entire chart uh, with the earlier separation. So here I already make the division with the uh, single single millisecond, get it? So because uh, right now there is need to stop any process in between the execution. So I am not going to execute any process for longer time 3 millisecond or 5 millisecond. After single millisecond we will check any other higher priority process is available. So we can stop current process and we can execute new process. It means we can make a context switch of CPU as per our discussion during this state transition diagram. Let's start for the process P1 arrival time of 0 and uh, there is again no need to think about the priority because whatever the priority it should be at arrival time 0 only process P1 is available. So there is no need to compare priority with the other processes definitely P1 will go for the execution right now we are executing P1 for the single time unit get it and uh, requirement of P1 for the CPU is only one time unit. So P1 uh, will execute up to time unit 1. But after executing time up to uh, for the 1 millisecond, P1 will go for the input output devices and requirement of uh, timing for the P1 that is 5 millisecond. So after exec executing up to 1 millisecond, P1 will go next, my, uh, next 5 millisecond for the uh, input output devices. So right now remaining process that is process P2 is arriving at time unit 0, uh, time unit 2. So from time unit 1 to time unit 2, there is no one process is available for execution because P1 is going for the IO. So time unit 1 to time unit 2 will remain empty. There is no process is in execution. Get it? And now we are sending P1 for the IO. So P1 will come back after 5 millisecond. It means 1 plus 5. So P1 will reach again up to 6 millisecond. Till this moment we can look about the other processes. So right now we are reaching at arrival time 2. So at arrival time 2 process P2 is already arrived. So again P3 is not available because uh, P3 is currently not arrived and as well as P1 is about the uh, P1 is using the input output devices. So there is no competitor for the process P2 and again no need to check priority because only P2 is available. So definitely P2 will go for the execution. If any other process arrive available at time unit 2, so there is need to think about the priority. Whatever the process have a lower number, they can execute first. Now, let's start executing P2 for the uh, 1 millisecond. Actually, requirement of P2 is uh, 3 millisecond, but we will check after every uh, single millisecond. Right now, we are executing P2 for 1 to uh, 3 sorry 2 to 3 it means 1 millisecond again if we, if we will check at arrival time uh, at a time unit 3 any other process is available yes at a time unit 3 P3 is actually arrived and priority of P3 is a one number so P3 has a higher priority as compared to P2 get it so we will stop P2 from the execution and we will start P3. It means here we are making a context switch of CPU from P2 to P3. This thing is known as a preemptive mode. Actually P2 was in execution and here we are preventing P2 from the execution. That thing is known as a preemptive mode. Now we will execute P3 for one millisecond. Get it? 
actual requirement of P3 is 2 time unit. After executing uh, 1 millisecond, we will check any other process available. Yes, available. P2 is available. P1 is using IO. So, uh, P3 has a already higher priority as compared to P2. So, we can continuously execute P3 for 1 millisecond. Get it? And after executing 1 more millisecond, P3 will again go for the input output devices because requirement of 2 millisecond and P3 actually executed for 2 milliseconds. So now P3 require input output devices. So P3 will go for the IO devices and it will use input output devices for 3 milliseconds. So 5 plus 3, P3 again reach us up to the 8 millisecond. So right now at a 5 millisecond, if we will look about the remaining processes. So only P1 is remain. Sorry, only uh, P2 is remain because P1 was actually using IO devices as, as well as again P3 is going for the input output devices. So only P2 process remains. So now we can execute P2 for one more time. Get it? So 5 plus 1, 6. Actually requirement of P2 is 3 time unit. We have already executed P2 for 1 millisecond. Here again we are executing P2 for 1 millisecond. So at a time unit 6, again we have to check any other competitor of P2 is available. Yes. Right now P1 completed the use of IO and P1 reach at a time unit 6. So we will compare the priority of P2 and P1. Which one has a lower number that process have a higher priority. So P1 has a priority number 2, P2 has a priority number 3. So 2 is a lower number. So P1 has a higher priority as compared to P2. So again we can stop P2 and we can start executing P1. Again there is a context switch from P2 to P1. Get it? So we will execute P1 for 1 millisecond, 7 and right now for the second phase P1 requires CPU for the 3 millisecond. Get it? So after 1 millisecond at a 7 we will check any other competitor that was P2. P3 is using IO devices. So P1 has a already higher priority as compared to P1. So uh, sorry P1 has a higher priority as compared to P2. So we will keep executing P1 continuously for 1 millisecond, 8. So out of 3, we have executed P1 for 2 millisecond. Right now P3 is arrived. So we will compare the priority of P1 and P3 because P3 completed their execution of IO. So P1 has a priority number 2 and P3 has a priority number 1. It means P3 has a higher, pri higher priority as compared to P1. So we will stop executing P1 and we will uh, switch over the CPU to process P3. Again, there is a context switch. P3 will start their execution and P3 is requiring uh, 1 millisecond CPU for their second phase. So P3 will execute up to 8 plus 1, 9 millisecond. At a 9 millisecond, P3 completed their total work earlier 2 millisecond for IO, 3 millisecond, sorry, earlier 2 millisecond for CPU, 3 millisecond for IO and 1 millisecond for CPU. So P3 completely executed here. So 9 millisecond is a completion time for P3. We will note down here into the completion time table. Now at a time unit 9, again we will compare uh, about the other processes. So P2 and P1 is remain. Get it? So P2 have a uh, priority number 3 and P1 has a priority number 2. So P1 has a higher priority. So out of P1 and P2, we will execute process P1 for the uh, remaining time. Because into the uh, second phase of P1, P1 requires CPU 3 time units and P1 already used the CPU for 2 milliseconds. So only 1 millisecond is remain. And 10 millisecond will become the completion time for process P1. So we can note down the completion time of P1. P1 and P3 completed their execution. So now only process P2 is remain. So now we will start process P2. But P2 is currently in uh, their first phase of CPU. It is uh, requiring 3 millisecond. Out of 3 millisecond, P2 use 1 millisecond here, 2 to 3 and 1 millisecond here, 5 to 6. So again P2 will execute for the 1 millisecond 10 to 11. So P2 will complete their first phase of uh, uh, CPU. Now P2 require input output devices for 3 millisecond. So again after time unit 11 P2 will go for the input output devices. It means up to next 3 time units 
grant chart remain empty because right now there is no process available to execute p3 and p1 already completed and p2 is going for the input output devices so next p2 will arrive at a time unit 14 and then after p2 will again start their uh, second phase of cpu so p2 is requiring one more millisecond for the cpu so p2 will execute up to time unit 15 and 15 time time unit will become the completion time for process p2 get it so here we are getting all uh, three processes completion time so we are able to find out turnaround time and waiting time that we have already learned during the fcfs and stf so we are not going to discuss more just i am putting waiting time and turnaround time into the table same thing you will be able to find out average turnaround time and average waiting time so i am not going to discuss more and i am not going to take more time from your side you can do uh, by your conveniency and if you are facing any type of doubt or queries so you can watch our earlier video also and in our next session we will discuss round robin algorithm that is the last technique of process scheduling or cpu scheduling